Hey guys, okay, so today we're gonna be doing the 25 hour initial service on this 2021 Polaris 570 Sportsman. Uh, so this thing's brand new, it'll be the first 25 hour service. I think it's got like 28 hours on it or something. Got the sap boiling there. So we're gonna do that today. Uh, and we're gonna do it outside just so you guys can see that it pretty much can be done anywhere. So this is the manual here. This is the 25 hour, 400 kilometer service. We're gonna be doing the engine oil, front gear case fluid. We're gonna change that. And the transmission uh, oil. It says break in oil level check right there. However, we're gonna do a full change of that transmission oil. It was just recommended by the dealer, and I figured why not? It's probably good to change that oil as well, uh, because anything, anytime something's breaking in, uh, that means that metal parts are, are meshing together and there's fragments going in the oil and they have to be removed. So they're gonna be the strongest and uh, there'll be the most of them at the first 25 hours or so. So this is everything you're gonna need. Uh, so this, I, I'm using all obviously Polaris um, oils and fluids here just because I don't like to take a chance just to save like five, ten bucks or whatever it is um, on some aftermarket oils. So I picked this up. This is going to be for your oil change uh, portion. That's nice. They put it in this box. It comes with the uh, oil and the little filter, which we'll see in a little bit. Uh, the demand drive fluid is Polaris's front differential fluid on this particular machine. Obviously, it's for other uh, machines they have as well, the Ranger, Razor. Uh, and then we have this AGL gear case lubricant and transmission fluid. You'll need two of those for the transmission and rear differential assembly. And then I, at Canadian Tire, Motomaster, picked up this uh, pump bottle because just looking at where the front differential is and even like the back transmission, uh, it's gonna be nice to have something that can pump out of these bottles and through this tube and you know what I mean, into, into a confined space. Cause I don't think I can get a funnel in. For the oil change, you probably just need a funnel. So that's all you need fluid wise and that tool there. And yeah, I guess we'll get into changing everything. So I got a couple funnels there. Uh, I've got my oil container. So that just traps all the oils, so we're not spilling anything on the ground. And I think the first thing we'll do is the engine oil. So uh, we'll get under there, and like I said, I'm doing this outside, it's gonna be a little rough, um, but just to show you, you can do this pretty much anywhere. You don't need to bring it to the dealer. And yeah, so we'll start with that, and I'll show you what wrenches you need. They're all hex, I think they're all hex um, uh, sockets. So I'll show you which ones you need, and let's drain some oil. Six mil hex here. And that fits right into the drain hole. So I'll put you under there and show you which one I'm taking out. It's kind of uh, down these nice rocks. So it's right, hopefully you can see that right there. I don't know if you can or not, I can't see the front of the phone. Uh, but I'm taking that at that little hex plug out right there. Oil looks really good. It's a good sign. It smells good too, doesn't smell burnt. Okay, so the oil filter is located right down in there. It's right there. So it's screwed in like this. So I'm gonna to try to get down there right now. Unscrew that by hand. If not, I got a little oil filter wrench. See how hard it's on there. Okay, yeah, it's on there pretty good. I'm gonna try this oil filter wrench. And of course, it's too big. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, it is. Okay, I'll try a pair of big uh, channel locks. There we go, you just gotta loosen it. Until it breaks the gasket and then we should be able to do it by hand. 
<clears throat> Make sure your oil pan's underneath. Kind of looks like maple syrup. Oh, that's awesome. So it's got a hole right where it would drip from the oil filter. So it doesn't run all over the inside of your oil pan. I like that. So it comes right through. We'll just unscrew that. Take this off. So that's what we'll be replacing with. 252-1424. The boss is here to check up on things. Okay, so this box here. There's our new filter and two bottles of PS4 oil. Uh, we got something else in here. Oh, a new crush washer for the um, oil plug, which is great. So we'll just open this up here. And put a little bit of oil on our gasket and we'll reinstall that. It's about half and then three quarters. Should be good. Okay, so I'm just gonna reinstall the drain plug so. <clears throat> Okay, so now we're gonna fill it with oil. So the oil fill is right here. And we're just gonna remove that dipstick there. And according to the manual, this uh, machine takes 1.9 liters of that motor oil that came in the kit. The kit. We got our long funnel, put that in there. Put all of this bottle. And I'll put about three quarters of this bottle and then we'll start it up, let it sit, make sure there's no oil light and then we'll check the dipstick. Okay, we'll start it up here. Okay, we got no oil light, which is good. No leaks, so it's probably run through. We'll let it sit and then we'll check the oil level. It says tighten to check oil level, so you gotta screw it all the way in to get the accurate reading. Okay, so it looks like we're at the, about the top line there, and the machine is a little bit on an angle this way, so that seems okay to me. I'll take it for a little ride and see what it looks like after, but we'll move on to the uh, front differential. Okay, so next morning, uh, things got a little busy, so we're going to do the front diff now, and it is a 8 millimeter socket and the drain plug is similar to the oil it's just right underneath the, the front diff here and there 
there's that there. So it's got a O-ring and a little magnet on it catching any fines. So we'll let that drain. So there's the fill cap right. No, no, hold on. There's it here, right there. So that little bolt right there, we got to use an extension. Get in there. It's eight mil as well, but we're gonna need the uh, the pump to fill that back up, and we're gonna fill it to the bottom of the threads. And there's that draining out right there. Okay, and then for that front uh, diff, we're going to be using the demand drive fluid, and we're going to try this uh, MotoMaster pump. So what you're looking for is the gallon pump, because it has to fit around. These little bottles have the same lid as the the gallon bottles that you know normal gallon bottles have. So we'll uh, take that off. I don't think, oh, we might need a little bit of an extension. Yeah, we'll put a little bit of extension on it. So when that screws in, it'll be about there. So we'll cut it about there. Should be good. Drop that in. Screw that on, that fits on there nice. Um, and then yeah, and then we can just pump it in. It has a pretty good lead on it. Uh, just so there's no spilling and like, I mean, I just, I, I couldn't get the funnel into that front spot and you'll see when you're doing it yourself, it's just way too tight. Maybe you have like a bendy funnel or something like that, it would work, but this seems easier. Okay, so I'm just taking the uh, fill plug off and I just wanted to show you guys, it is a little bit of a pain if you have the winch like I do. So, try to get you in there so you can see it. Um, hold on a sec here. So what I had to do, if you can see that, so there's the fill plug right there. And what I did is I put an eight mil, um, I'll, I'll take it out and show you, but it's an eight mil socket or driver. And then I had to put an eight mil little wrench on it. And that's what I'm using to turn. And you can see I can turn the, well, I can turn the, I just have to get it past this little CV boot here. But basically that's how I'm gonna take that out. But I'll show you the, the setup and that's because you can't get a wrench straight through here. This little tab here holds your wrench crooked so that you can't get a good grab on that eight mil opening. So let's get that out and I'll show you how we did it. You can try and get a socket in it and then there it is there. So what I was saying is you can't get it, like it's not perfectly in line because that little tab's in the way. So somehow you gotta loosen it, then use this to unscrew it whatever way you can. Um, even a, a long version, an eight mil with the, like the T-handle ones, I don't think would work well because you can't, you still can't get it in. It's like basically that tab in there is, if this was the tab, it's like right there. So it sort of blocks the hole and it's about this far away. Anyway, got it out. Let's fill it back up. Okay, we'll put our um, drain plug back in. We'll get our little pump here. And the oil is super clear. The stuff that came out was sort of a gray color so I'm thinking that was the metal the metal filings okay so I'm gonna shake the machine and I can see that the fluid when I shake the machine is right at the level of the fill hole that's what we want okay let's put the cap back on okay fill plug going back in like I said I'm gonna start it with this and then we'll do the final tightening with the uh, with the open end wrench there. Make sure we're still at the hole. Okay, so I'm close there, or I'm tight, pretty tight, just using the looseness in the in the screwdriver, and then I'm gonna get it 
kind of tight. Try to, actually maybe I can leave that little socket there. Okay, so I've got the little end on it there. I'm just gonna go in with my wrench. It's hard to do with one hand. And then I'm just gonna tighten it all the way down. And then we're good. Let's head to the transmission. Okay, so just a little tip for you guys. Uh, if you are doing that and you do have a chance to go pick up a special tool, what I would probably use is a uh, quarter inch drive, uh, eight mil socket with a quarter inch swivel like this. This is a, a half inch or a three eight swivel and it's a little too big, but a quarter inch one would have been just perfect. I just don't have it out here. Okay, so for the transmission, the drain is on the side, right there. So I'll get in there, eight mil, take that off. And it says drain um, right on the casing. So here's the plug from that one. It has some filings on it. And it is quite a bit more black, like I said. So we'll clean that up and we'll change that oil out. Okay, so the uh, fill plug on this one is on the well, driver side, I guess, the left side. And it's eight millimeter as well. It's gonna get an extension. Transmission takes 948 milliliters of fluid. And the, uh, the bottles are 946. So we might, we're gonna use a full bottle and like two milliliters, but there's probably gonna be some residual in the transmission. So we might not need to use the second bottle, I'm not sure. That's what that looks like. Okay, so I reinstalled my fill plug, or my drain plug, and I'm just gonna pump in the new fluid. So the fluid actually is like a purpley black color. It's kinda cool. Um, but I'm gonna pump in this whole bottle, and then possibly a little bit more as needed. So as you guys can hopefully see, I know it's the lighting's kind of bad, but I pumped in this whole bottle and it is running out. So that tells me it is up to the level of the bottom of the thread. So I'm not even gonna bother opening that other bottle, it's just a waste. It's probably just a little bit of residual that didn't drain out. Um, it's compensating for that extra two milliliters. So we'll put the cap on and we'll be good to go. Okay guys, so that's pretty much all you need to know for your 25 hour service. Couple other things, just inspect the brake pads for wear and the fuel system. So when you cycle the key on uh, before you start it, uh, you can hear the fuel pump pump up and you're just checking for leaks anywhere. Uh, those would be pretty obvious, you'd smell fuel. Uh, so our next service inter interval will be 50 hours and that's, I'm pretty sure, all just inspection. So inspect, 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 be all inspect. So yeah, lubricate the steering, uh, there's just a couple of little zerks you got to lubricate, but for the most part, it's a check. 75 hour is check, and then 100 hour, again, a whole bunch of checks, and then we'll replace the engine oil again uh, right there at 100 hours. So if you want to reset your meter, so just to remind me to do this at, a, at 50 hours now, the engine's at 31.2 hours, uh, so we'll hold down mode and just cycle through until you get to service hour, then click mode. And you can set that to whatever you want, or you can turn it right off if you like. Single right off, so you just don't have to see the thing blinking all the time if you're past your service hour. But I know that at 50 hours, I gotta check a bunch of stuff, so we'll just put it at 20 there. And so 30 plus 20 is around 50. Uh, mode, and then cycle through to exit, mode, and there you go. So now when you go through your 
service here, it'll say service in 20 hours, and then once you get to there, this will be flashing. So that's all there is to it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, pretty straightforward process. A little bit of finicky at the front there with that differential if you have the winch. Um, but I'll post all the product numbers, the Polaris product numbers of the oils I use and what they're for and how much you need. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. Hope this, hope this helps you out.